Hey again, it's Mr. Lum, and today we're going to be talking about chemical equations and how to balance those chemical equations. So first off, let's talk about this chemical equation that we have here. Um, we see we have 2Na plus Cl2 making 2NaCl. And we're going to define some of these things. So the first definition that we have here is reactants. So the definition is what goes into the reaction, or my simplified definition is just the left side of the reaction. So this right here are the reactants. So Na and Cl2 are the reactants. Now the products, or in other words, what comes out of the reaction, what, uh, what is produced, or my easy definition is just the right side of the reaction is just this right here. Okay, so what's produced? So Na and Cl2 are going into the reaction and then NaCl is coming out of the reaction. Now, the last term that we're going to be talking about is coefficients. Okay, and a coefficient is this thing right here. They're the numbers that go in front. So here are the coefficients. Now these are not what we're going to be calling coefficients. Um, this just indicates that there are that Cl has bonded with itself because Cl is or chlorine is diatomic, and so therefore it's it binds with itself, kind of like how Na is bound to. Uh, Cl right here, and this Na is just lone. So a coefficient are the big numbers that are in front. Okay, so some of the basic definitions of what we see in chemical equations. Now, before we actually start balancing, we have to kind of realize why are we balancing, and there are some conservation laws. So there's the law of conservation of mass, and what it means is. Uh, the mass isn't changing throughout the reaction. So if the reactants weigh 25 grams, the products are also going to weigh 25 grams. The mass at the start equals the mass at the end. So if we think of something like paper that is burning, we often think, well, the mass is decreasing. But if we think of paper that is burning, um, yeah, it appears to us that the mass is decreasing, but if we uh, captured all of that gas that is produced when paper is burning, uh, the mass at the start would equal the mass at the end. Okay, so we have to understand that paper burning is all of that paper or that um, carbon and hydrogen, and um, and the burning part is, is reacting with oxygen and it's producing lots of CO2 and if we captured all that CO2 gas and all the other products uh, paper burning there is a conservation of mass mass does not change from the beginning to the end now same thing with the con there's a law of conservation of atoms essentially if you start with 10 carbons at the beginning of your reaction, you're going to finish with 10 carbons. So the amount of uh, atoms at the start will equal the amount of atoms at the end. So if you have five carbons and two nitrogens at the start, you'll have five carbons and two nitrogens at the end. They're going to be in a different arrangement, maybe in different molecules, and um, have very, very different properties, but they're, uh, the amount of atoms uh, will equal. There's also the law of conservation of electrical charge, and I think you're getting the idea. The electrical charge at the beginning will equal the electrical charge at the end. So if we had, like our previous um, example, we had um, Na and Cl2 is making NaCl. Na solid has no charge, and Cl2 sorry, 2 has no charge either. Now NaCl is a ionic compound and Na plus and Cl minus, well these do have charges but the total charge is going to be zero at the finish and the total charge at the beginning is already zero. So total charge at the beginning and total charge at the end are going to equal.
okay? And there's law, and then finally there's the law of conservation of energy, which just means that energy at the beginning and the end will also equal. So in a previous lesson, we learned about exo and endothermic reactions, how certain reactants might be losing a lot of energy. Um, and they are losing a lot of energy. They're losing a lot of potential energy that is changed into heat energy and, and maybe light or something like that. Uh, so the energy can change forms, but the amount of energy will stay conserved throughout the whole reaction. So that brings us to something like this equation right here. So one of the things that we talked about was the conservation law of atoms. In other words, the amount of atoms that go into the reaction must equal the number of atoms going out of the reaction. So we he see here in the products that there are two sodium going out of the reaction. But on the reactant side, there's only one sodium going in. So this is uh, breaking the law of conservation of atoms. So what we need to do is we need to balance it and figure out exactly what is going into the reaction and what is coming out. So I wrote here, if 2Na are coming out of the reaction, this means that 2Na must be going into the reaction. And same thing for everything else around here. So we need to uh, write coefficients. Remember our term coefficients, the numbers that go in front. So we can add coefficients. We cannot add these little subscripts, but we can add coefficients in order to balance a reaction. So if I was to balance this reaction, I could add a coefficient like this, and I could add a coefficient like this, and we'd see that, well, there are two sodiums going into this reaction, two sodiums going out of this reaction. There are uh, one, two, three, one, two hydrogens here and another two hydrogens here, so four hydrogens total going into the reaction. And we have four hydrogens now going out of the reaction. This H2O, so there's two H2Os, so that makes there four hydrogens. Okay. And if we did that for all of them, there's two of these oxygens and two of these oxygens, one sulfate, SO4, and one SO4 over here. So now it's a balanced reaction. Okay, so how did I do this so quickly? How did I add all these coefficients so quickly? Well, I have a few uh, tips and tricks for you. So there are tons of different ways to balance reactions, and here is my way. So I call it the LUM method, of course. And uh, here are some rules that I live by when I balance reactions. And these, my method doesn't always work all the time, but you know, it gets me, it, it works for me. So it says, uh, do not start with a lone element. Leave lone elements last. That's my first tip. Okay, and we're going to talk about what does that mean. Second tip is do not start with an element represented more than once on one side. And the third one is use fractions if you want. And we'll talk about that. So let's start with number one. Do not start with a lone element. What does that mean? Well, see how here is C and H are kind of bound together. So the neither one is lone. C and O is bound together and H and O is bound together. So these are not lone elements. However, this one is a lone element. O is a lone element. So do not start with, in this case right here, do not start with oxygen. Okay, number two, do not start with an ele element represented more than once on a given side. So O is represented here and here. So it's represented twice on this side, on the product side. So these are two reasons why we should not start with oxygen and balancing them. Okay, And we'll talk about fractions later. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I can start with C or H. So it doesn't matter which one. So let's start with C. So I have C5H12. So I'm going to write, there's only one carbon here. So if I place this coefficient in front, 5 times this one. So now the carbons are balanced. Good. Now I have 12 hydrogens here and two hydrogens here. If I place a six 
right here. I'm now going to have 6 times 2, that's 12, and that now equals, so my hydrogens are balanced and my carbons are balanced. Now I'm going to move over to my oxygens. Right now on this side I only have two oxygens, and this side I have, well, 6 times this one, so I have 6 oxygens on my product side, plus 5 times 2, that's another 10 oxygens. So if I add that up, there's 16 oxygens on this side, and on my reactant side, I only have two. Okay, so these are not balanced. So if I put a eight right here, okay, now there are 16 oxygens on this side, and there is 10 plus six, there's 16 oxygens on that side. Now everything is balanced, okay? so. This is how I balance an equation. Now let's take a look at another one. I'll do a very similar equation. C4H10. Okay. And I'm going to do, so again, these are combustion equations. And many students have a little bit of a hard time doing combustion equations. Okay, so a very similar problem, um, except that I changed a few of these numbers, these subscript numbers right down here. So again, I'm not going to be starting with O because it's a lone element. I'll not be starting with O again because it's represented more than once on a given side. And so then I should start balancing. This time I have four C's, and so this time I'm going to write a four as my coefficient on this side. Now I got four on both sides. Okay, I have. 10 hydrogens here, and well, I'm going to place a 5 right here because so now that I have 10 hydrogens there. Hmm. Now I have to do my last step of balancing the oxygens, and so I'm going to uh, I have two oxygens on this side, and this side I have, well, let's add them up. I got five oxygens, five times this one is five, and I got four times the two, that's eight. Okay, and so now I have uh, 5 plus 8, that's 13 oxygens. Okay, and I only have 2 on this side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to think 2 times a certain number has to equal 13. So if I went 2 times 6 and a half, 2 times 6.5, That'll equal 13. So I'm going to write 6.5 right here. Okay. If I didn't want to write 6.5, I could write uh, uh, I could write something like thir uh, 13 over 2, right? I could write 13 over 2 if I wanted to. Okay. Now. So this is balanced. If we look at it, we have, you know, 13 oxygens on this side, we have 13 oxygens on this side, 4 carbon, 4 carbon, 10 hydrogens, 10 hydrogens. Everything is balanced. However, this 6 and a half looks it looks a little bit ugly, okay? So if I don't want this 6 and a half, what I can do is I can multiply everything by the number 2 and that'll make that six and a half go away. So I could rewrite this by going two C four H ten plus times this by two. That would make this thirteen O two times this by two. That would make that eight C O two plus ten. H2O. Now it's a good practice to always check your answers. Okay, so I have 2 times this. I have 20 H's on this side, and I have 10 times 2. I have 20 H's on that side, so my H's are all balanced. I have uh, 2 times 4. I have 8 carbons on this side, and I have 8 carbons on this side. Good. I have 10 times this 1, so I have 10 plus 16. That's 26 oxygens and 13 times 2, that's also 26 oxygens. So I can give, this is my right answer, everything's balanced. Okay. And so I used a fraction, or in this case I used a decimal, 
but you can use a fraction uh, so instead of writing six and a half if you wanted you can use a fraction and write uh, 13 over 2 okay and then um, you don't if you want to get rid of your fraction times everything by this denominator here so times everything by 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and you get this answer over here and it's balanced okay so what I would like you to do is try to do well we just did this one right here so um, we should all we should know how to do that from just the previous slide but uh, what we can do is take a look at this one and see if we can try doing um, oops see if we can try doing the second one right here so we have silver nitrate plus copper uh, making copper uh, to nitrate and uh, silver. So this is a single replacement reaction. Now, if we remember my rules, don't start with a lone element. So don't, we're not going to start with Cu, and we're not going to be starting with Ag. And nothing is represented twice, and so let's start balancing. So, since we're not allowed starting with Cu and Ag, what we're going to do is we're going to start with this NO3. So I'm going to treat NO3 just like one element, not an N and not an O, uh, but just NO3 as one element since it's on both sides. So there's two NO3s on this side, so I'm going to place a 2 on this side right here. Okay, so there's two NO3s and two NO3s. Now, uh, I could move to Cu, but Cu is already balanced. Okay, there's one here and one here. So I have to go to the next one that's not balanced, Ag. So Ag is not balanced, so there's two here, and so I'm going to place a two right here. And now Ag is balanced. And we're done, and that's it. So here are one, two, three, four questions that you can do. What I'd like you to do is try putting the video on pause, see if you can use my method and try to balance these four questions right now and then I'll put the answers up in two seconds. And okay, hopefully you put the video on pause and you unpause it and here are the answers. Okay, so hopefully you had all of those right and uh, we'll see you next time.